Credited for cutting through the Yellow River, the numinous G River runs smoothly. The millennia-old architecture is the only legacy of the four waterways. Located at the foot of Mount Wangwu, where the G River originates, the city of Jiyuan in Henan province has preserved Jidu Temple, a sacred, ancient temple for thousands of years. Jidu Temple, also known as Jidu Beihai Temple, was first established by Emperor Sui Wen in 582. From the Sui and Tang dynasties onwards, the temple was the site for ritual sacrifice to the Ji River and North Sea. It is the only surviving and intact ritual architecture of the four waterway temples. Jidu Temple covers an area of more than 130 acres and its general layout maintains the historical and architectural style of the Ming and Qing dynasties. Originating at Mount Wangwu, the Ji River, among the most famous in ancient China, flowed through Henan and Shandong provinces, eventually emptying into Buohai Bay. In ancient China, people referred to rivers that had their own headwaters and that flowed into the ocean as Du, or waterways. The Ji River, together with the Yangtze, the Yellow, and the Huai rivers, made up the four waterways. The Ji River's headwaters served as one of the core areas of early civilization in China's central plains, and the names of cities within the Ji River's cradle land, as well as those along its watercourse, such as Jiyuan, Jinan, Jiyang, and Jining, are all characterized by their own histories of the once vast and mighty Ji River Basin. In ancient times, the Ji River flowed into the Yellow River in Henan's Xinyang region, and it was assumed that a tributary of the Yellow River in the south was actually the downstream of the Ji River. This was owed to the fact that the Yellow River was muddy, but this tributary of the river, like the upstream of the Ji River, was quite clear. Therefore, the Ji River was praised for its noble character of cutting the muddy yellow river yet never being contaminated, and was honored as Pellucid Ji and Duke of the Pellucid Headstream. Regarding this mystery, Shi Nianhai, a renowned historical geographer, has discovered that the main reason actually lies in the sedimentation of two major lakes, namely lakes Xing and Zhuye. However, Due to a variety of reasons, including a change in course of the Yellow River and the natural accumulation of sediment in the riverbed, after the Han Dynasty, the Ji River gradually dried up. Today, the river is long gone, and the current stream channel of the lower reaches of the Yellow River runs along the Ji River's old course. Nonetheless, the Ji River had always been ranked the equal of the Yellow, Yangtze, and Huai Rivers, and was offered ritual ceremonies by the imperial court throughout imperial Chinese history. State sacrifices dedicated to the four waterways began in the Han Dynasty and, after 61 BCE, became a regular ritual. At that time, the state sacrifice to the Ji River was performed in Lin Yi in Shandong. In the Sui Dynasty, the site was transferred to Ji Yuan and Jidu Temple was established in 582. During the Tang Dynasty, Jidu Temple also became the site for remotely worshipping the North Sea. In 797, the Shrine of the North Sea was subsequently established behind Jidu Temple. The temple was repeatedly expanded throughout the Song, Yuan, Ming, and Qing Dynasties, and was eventually developed into a large building complex. Jidu Temple is located on Miao Street in Jiyuan. It is currently the largest extant ancient building complex in Henan, and it includes more than 30 buildings established since the Song Dynasty. Jidu Temple can be generally divided into four sections. 
Jidu Temple sits in front, dedicated to the spirit of the Ji River. The Shrine of the North Sea sits at the back, dedicated to the spirit of the North Sea. The Palace of Imperial Incense lies in the east, where the Imperial Commissioner used to stay, and the Palace of Celestial Celebration lies in the west, including the Hall of the Jade Emperor and housing for the Taoists who are in charge of the temple. Approaching Jidu Temple, one's first view is of a magnificent gate called Qingyuan Dongfu Gate, or Gate of the Pellucid Headstream Grotto. This name is based on the official titles of the Spirit of Ji River, Duke of the Pellucid Headstream and King of Loyal Guardian of the Pellucid Headstream. Entering the Temple Gate, there's a paved path about 179 meters long and 3 meters wide, along which cypress trees grow in neat lines, presenting a scene of great solemnity and serenity. The paved path leads to the second gate on the central axis, Qingyuan Gate. Qingyuan means source of the pellucid Ji River, and Chinese literati always used the notion of being pellucid to praise the river. This gate, protected by four statues of armed Taoist Dharma protectors, was reconstructed during the mid-Ming dynasty. Between the Qingyuan Gate and the Third Gate, Yuan De Gate, or Gate of Profound Virtue, is a large space where the pilgrimage procession used to hold additional ceremonies and prepare for the temple's main event. On each side of Qingyuan Gate sits a massive stele pavilion. The pavilion on the western side holds the stele of the Imperial Edict of the Great Ming, established in 1370. This stele is an edict issued by Emperor Ming Taizu for the purpose of simplifying and correcting the titles of spirits of major mountains, waters, and so on. The stele pavilion on the eastern side holds the stele of the images and records of Ji Du Beihai Temple. This stele, first inscribed in 1460, contains both texts and images, illustrating the thriving nature of Ji Du Temple during the mid Ming Dynasty. The complete layout of Jidu Temple is engraved in the center, along with names of the temple's main buildings. The bottom part consists of images and texts. There's also a portrait of the spirit of the Ji River on one side of the stele, which cannot be seen anywhere else. Across from the Yuanda Gate is a spacious garden, which serves as the site's core for making ritual sacrifices to the Ji River. The entire place is centered around ruins of Yuanda Palace and the Sleeping Hall. Yuxiang Palace, or Palace of Imperial Incense, and Tianqing Palace, or Palace of Celestial Celebration, are located on the eastern and western corridors, respectively. The rectangular space between the palace and the gate is where ritual offerings were made to the spirit, the most important part of the temple's sacrificial ceremonies. Although Yuanda Palace, the very center of Jidu Temple, was destroyed, the remaining base is still remarkable enough for us to imagine the enormousness of the palace. It was first established during the early Song period and has been reconstructed and enlarged many times. There are also lateral halls on both sides. The Hall of Yuanjun, or Primordial Goddess, in the east, and the Hall of Sandu, or Three Waterways, in the west. While Yuanda Palace is where the spirit of the Ji River works, the sleeping hall is his bedroom. Enshrined inside are a reclining statue of the spirit and his retinue of three women. During our visit, the sleeping hall was under renovation and, as such, we regretfully did not manage to see the statues and stele inside. To the north of the sleeping hall is the Linyuan Gate, or Gate of Approaching the Chasm, which marks the beginning of the building complex of the Shrine of the North Sea. State sacrifices dedicated to the Four Seas started in the Han Dynasty. The North Sea, being one of the Four Seas, was granted the title Obliging King of the North Sea during the Tianbao period of the Tang Dynasty.
But, because the physical location of the North Sea was never stated explicitly in ancient China, there was no particular ritual place dedicated to it. Starting in 747, Jidu Temple became the official site for worshipping the North Sea from afar. Behind the Yinyuan Gate is the primary space for performing ritual ceremonies at the Shrine of the North Sea, and nearly all the buildings are arranged around Jidu Pond. Various streams outside the temple wall converge to create Jidu Pond, and these streams form the eastern and western halves of the split pond. These two halves are artistically separated by stone bridges and a pavilion, though they are also connected by an arched door. The eastern pond is surrounded by three stone bridges dating from the Song Dynasty. There are currently around 160 stelae preserved at Jidu Temple, all dating from the Tang Dynasty onward. The inscriptions on these stelae relate stories about the temple, record its glorious times, describe the process of state sacrifices, and so forth. This rich information is invaluable for studying the history of Jidu Temple, traditional state sacrifice, and various forms of popular belief. Time marches on. Although the Ji River has disappeared, Jidu Temple still stands. As a ritual site continuing the centuries-old Ji River tradition, this temple has become the soul of the region's culture. In its course through the years, the Ji River mingled with Jidu Temple and the city of Ji Yuan, leaving behind a precious legacy of the history and culture of China's central plains. Jidu Temple is currently run by Taoists of the Hua Shan lineage, and Professor Baron Tahar, one of our team members, conducted an interview with one of these local Taoists.